All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Unity Spiritual Center. That was a little bit of a, a, a Indiana Jones thing. But let's, I invite you all to stand now, and we're going to sing Higher Place by Daniel Neymar. Good morning, Unity. Is this on? Yes. Please help me welcome Reverend Gordon Kyler, Indiana Jones. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> are you guys ready to have some fun? This summer, we are embarking today on our 12 Power Summer Film Festival. And we're starting with the movie. We're not going to show the whole movie. It's a three-hour movie. I'm going to talk long enough this morning just to give you a heads up. <laughs> but we are starting with the movie Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade and exploring the power of faith because that movie is all about faith. And we're going to have a lot of fun with this series. And to kick it off, thanks to the Buffett family, we have popcorn. And yes, you can bring it into the sanctuary. So if you want to make a mad dash out to get popcorn, now's the time. <laughs> or you can get it later, either one. <laughs> um, but yes, you can bring it in. It's okay. We have a vacuum cleaner. It's allowed. <laughs> because I said so. So welcome. Is there any, I know there's people here for the very first time. I met a couple of you. If you are here for the first time, and whether I've met you or not, and you're comfortable, raise your hand so we can welcome you. We are glad you, and some of you are returning home after being gone five years. We are so glad you are back with us. And we'd like to welcome Becca back on our music team. Yes. <laughs> Becca was on our music team back when I was here before 2014, at least. Back at the olden times. <laughs> it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> and we're delighted to have her back with us. Oh, man, there's so much going on. You may notice we have our new door in. Thank you to Carl and Jay and I think Patrick, maybe. I don't know. But thank you to everybody who helped put, make that happen, to our team that raised the funds and all of you who helped make that happen. We are done with doors except for a little bit of trim work. 
and it has really made a difference in our building. It has, it will help lower our, our carbon footprint, our environmental footprint, because they won't be leaking once they're sealed, <laughs> which is going to happen, we know. So yeah, that's next. So thank you. We've got a lot going on, a lot of great stuff happening. And uh, for those of you who are, who are here for the first time, we want to say to you, welcome home. We want you to know that we see you. We see your hopes. We see your dreams. We see your struggles. Most importantly, though, we see your light. And we want you to know that we are here at Unity Spiritual Center to provide a safe place for you to grow spiritually. And therefore, whatever brought you here today, whether it be seeking a deeper understanding of unity principles or just discovering what unity principles are, whether it be healing, looking for community, you will find it here. And we also want you to know that we are not concerned with the color of your skin because all colors are on the spectrum of light. We are not concerned with who you love because the world definitely needs love in every variety there is. And we are not concerned about where you came from because... You are home with us right here and now. So welcome. And we want you to know also that we have other food besides popcorn. That's after service. <laughs> and you are more than welcome to join us for community and make sure I get to say hello to you and get to know you a little bit. So with that, let's pull out our phones and check in on our social media. If you do that with the affirmation, stepping into the void with faith. It's a longer one today, but you can do it. Stepping into the void with faith. And once you have checked in on social media, please put your phone on Do Not Disturb. And now I would like to introduce Michael Small for some information about things that are happening here at Unity Spiritual Center. Thank you, Gordon. Here's some information about what's happening here for June 23rd, 2023. Reiki here at USC is, uh, is beginning. Reiki energy is, is healing, balance, and relaxing, and we are blessed with many congregants who can do Reiki treatments. Martine Beckman, raise your hand, Martine. Everybody knows Martine. We'll share information on this way. We are, we are offering our services to our community. Please join us in the front of the sanctuary immediately following the service. We are still assisting Ernie Pyle Middle School students during the summer by collecting $5 gift cards or cash to various fun food uh, places in the area. The gift cards are then distributed to the students as an incentive for education, educational activities they participate, they're participating in over the summer. To take an envelope off the tree, which is in the foyer, um, and because it's not here on the platform, put the $5 gift card or the cash in the envelope. And during service, you can put it in the offering bag that comes by or just give it to me at the end of service. Thank you. Uh, we are moving, as you all know, and we're looking for people to come help us move our office. Yeah, we're moving the office across the street to here. So we're needing some help, please. So if you can and you're able, please join us. Let Gordon know or the office know that you can help. Save the date, barbecue July 7th. Um, after the service in the parking lot in the grassy area, hamburgers, hot dogs, veggie burgers, desserts, and drinks are provided by Jeff Siddle, will be grilling, who will be grilling. Sign up in the foyer to provide condiments such as onions, tomatoes, lettuce, green onions, etc., or a side dish, baked beans, Salads, coleslaw, veggies tray, fruit, mac and cheese, etc. We're also still needing volunteers to help set up and tear down. There are many activities happening here at Unity Spiritual Center. We are encouraging you to check out our website, Facebook page, YouTube, or our online weekly newsletter, or just call the office. We're happy to talk to you. All right, for our worship team, you've already met Reverend Gordon Kyler. Janet Harula is our trustee of the day. I am Michael Small, I'm your platform host. Susie Orchard and Carol Chambers are our prayer chaplains and you can find them on either side of the sanctuary uh, to offer prayers at the end of the service. If you can't make that, there's also prayer slips in the back of the chairs, you can drop that off in the foyer. Todd Lowry is our music director. And today's special music is the USC band along with Todd Lowry, which is uh, David Craig, 
Sharon Eldridge, Todd Lowry, and Becca Grants. And we also want to say special thank you to the AVLM team uh, who's making us shine so brightly on, on, on the computer Facebook. So let's give them a hand. All right, come on up. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. It's great to see so many new faces here and old faces and just people who are old, sorry. <laughs> people who have been here for a long time and support this community. Let's just say that. <laughs> um, please join me in reciting our mission, vision, and core values. Our mission. We inspire spiritual growth through honoring many paths, education, prayer, sacred service, and abundant living. Our vision, centered in love, we see our harmonious world of divine expression. Core values, we are Christ-centered, loving, inclusive, joyous, uplifting, open-minded, and fun. And our unity credo, we believe all people are created with sacred worth. We serve all people in emotional and spiritual ways. We welcome the diversity of all. God and unity leave no one out. And before I talk about our ways to give today, um, for those of you that don't know, I'm the president of the board here at Unity Spiritual Center. And we appointed a new board member at our meeting on Tuesday. Her name is Glenda Fagan. She's sitting in the back there. She is also on the hospitality team with us but we just like to everybody to welcome her to be on our board of trustees. So thank you, Glenda. So our organization is supported by your love offerings and tithes, and now is the time when we have the ushers come forward, and today we have our teens helping us out, so that's great. They're coming up the aisle, and there's several ways to give. You can give in person during the Sunday service here. You can donate through our church center app. And if you don't have that app, please call the office and we will help you set that up. You can donate online on our website at uscabq.org slash give or by text to give on your phone, 84321. And now for our offering blessing, please join me. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I dreamed of rain and the rains came Soft and easy, sweet and clear I dreamed of rain and the rains came And peace spread over the land I dreamed of rain and the rains came Soft and easy, sweet and clear. I dreamed of rain and the rains came and peace spread over the land. I dreamed of summer and the winds changed and the green was easy and the rivers ran. I dreamed of summer and the winds changed and peace spread over the land and the flowers bloom in the desert and the air is fresh and clean I dreamed of rain and the rains came and peace spread I 
Before we do our prosperity dedication, I wanted to share with you, which we have been doing for the last several weeks, what our income was this past week. And as a reminder, we need 5000 a week to meet our, our obligations. And this week, we collected $2,539. So we are now going to bless the prosperity dedication of the, what's in the bags here. In a universe overflowing with the allness of God, all the needs and desires of Unity Spiritual Center and those we serve are bountifully met. From every direction, known and unknown, expected and unexpected, our abundant good is here now. Thank you, God. All right, it's time for a congregational song. So I invite you to stand up. We're going to sing Every Need is Fulfilled. Revealed, I am where was I? 
Thank you. Have a seat, please. In this very room, there's quite enough love for one like me. And in this very room, there's quite enough joy. generous. Sunday, June 23, 2024. I am generous without any expectation of a return. There have been times when I relied on the generosity of others. I remember feeling grateful when they shared what they had with open hearts, not thinking of how I might repay their kindness. This is the true gift of generosity not just the material offered or the services rendered, but the feeling I am worthy of someone's time, treasure, and effort. This love and compassion is at the heart of my generous impulses too. I give not out of pity or even out of obligation or duty, but so others may know their worthiness through me. This each person is fully divine and fully human. I honor each person's humanity by doing what I can to help and support them, as others have helped and supported me. I am generous without any expectation of a return. And as we think, about the power that is in generosity. We turn deeper within. Deeper within where we come into a realization of the unlimited universe in which we dwell. In one mind and one heart. I join with everyone in meditation today, allowing these words to become the words of the one mind and one heart. I think of the wondrous universe and its endless supply of all that is needed. I take a breath and I realize I have never experienced a time when I could not breathe. As perhaps I taste the popcorn that we have this morning, I think of all the times my body has been fed by the unlimited supply of food. As I think of all of the times I may have needed an encouraging word, a smile, or just someone looking into my heart. I rejoice and I give thanks that what was needed was there. I live in an unlimited universe. And as I exercise my power of faith, I know this. For faith is the, uh, is the knowing, the expectation, the awareness of all that is unlimited, overflowing in every way. I think of the prayers that have been spoken on my behalf, 
And I say, thank you, God, for those generous souls who gave of their time, their energy. And today, I think of those in places like Ruidoso who are in need of our prayer. And I take the moment to send a blessing to hold the vision of rain gently falling, of immediate needs being met, of lives being rebuilt, of forests restored, and of an awakening in all hearts of our wondrous connection with creation itself. As I have received, I give forth. I give forth love. I give forth time. I give forth energy. I give forth my effort as is necessary and possible. But above all, I give and I receive love. The power of faith reminds me that I live in an opulent universe, that all that is needed already exists, and that my purpose, my role, is to be a channel, a channel to receive, and a channel to give. As I imagine myself being fully in the flow of the universe itself, I rest in quiet openness as a channel for all that is. As I receive, as I give, I am reminded of the power of gratitude, and I am grateful that I can give and grateful that I can receive, and grateful to all the many channels that flow to me and that I can feed into. Being filled with gratitude, for all of the love and all of the hope and all of the power that is available right here in this very room, I say thank you, God. In this very room, there's quite enough love for all the world. And in this very room, there's quite enough joy.
band has a song called Leap of Faith. world without a master plan I make life up as I go as best as I can sometimes in life you must take a chance and fly by the sea of my pants I'm standing at the riverside the water looks deep and the river is wide I don't have a boat but I know how to swim so I kick up my shoes and jump in There's no need to fear, I know how to climb. Take it one step at a time. I'm ringing the bell at heaven's gate. Now there's no reason to hesitate. I'm open the door, it's never too late. I take the first step, I don't wait. What it takes is a leap. Plan. I make life up as I go, as best as I can. Sometimes in life, I must take a chance and fly by the seat of my pants. I must ring the bell at heaven's gate. Uh, there's no reason to hesitate. Open the door, it's never too late. I take the first step by the way. What it takes is a leap. Thank you. Woo. And welcome back, Becca. <laughs> Woo. Wow. Thank you, guys. Let's hear it for our band. <laughs> yes. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All it takes is a leap of faith. And we are stepping out at a leap of faith of our new 12 Powers series. Just to give you a little bit of a background where this came from, a couple of us Unity ministers were talking online one day and talking about how, you know, summers we kind of look for something different to do. And we got talking about our favorite movies and some of the lessons that are in them. And then, hey, why don't we do a 12-power film series? And Ste Reverend Stephanie Sy, a classmate of mine, she kind of took this on and spearheaded it. And thank you, Reverend Stephanie, for um, making this happen. Are you ready? Are you ready to take a leap of faith? Okay, so now officially, we wel I welcome you to our 12 Powers Summer Film Festival. And if you're wondering what are the Unity 12 Powers are or just need a refreshment, they are faith, strength, love, wisdom, power, imagination, elimination, will, order, enthusiasm, or zeal, um, and life. And I think I missed one. I did, understanding. <laughs> that is 12. The 12 powers were suggested by Jesus Christ, taught by Jesus Christ. And Charles Fillmore 
brought it into more modern understanding, a way we can interpret it and, and see what Jesus was doing as he gathered the disciples, which represent the 12 powers. We don't pray to the disciples. They are representations of the powers that are within us. These powers are basic primal spiritual gifts or abilities. And everyone, regardless of religion or no religion, regardless of anything, every single human being who has ever lived, is living, or ever will live, has all 12 of these powers. It's not something we have to go out and get. You got it. It's like the old spaghetti sauce. It's in there. It's in you. We already have them. But we're not always aware of them. Or we're not always using them to their fullest potential. If we did, we would be doing what Jesus did, what the Buddha did. We would be living that life. And that is the great promise of Jesus, is that I have come that you will have life and have it abundantly. And we do that through developing and using our 12 powers. We call it expressing the fullness of the Christ. If you notice in the stories, Jesus did not really begin his teaching ministry until he had gathered together the 12 disciples or the 12 powers. Now, we use these powers all the time today, but we will demonstrate them most powerfully according to our understanding of them, and hence our series now, God speaks to us in many, many, many different ways. You've heard me say, I can pick up the Sunday comics and find a metaphysical lesson in them. Well, guess what? Film has a metaphysical lesson into, in it. If you really watch, I don't think I've ever seen but maybe one or two films that didn't have some sort of spiritual message if you look deep. Sometimes you got to look really hard, but it's there. Fortunately, there are some films that you don't have to look that hard. It's pretty obvious. So we're going to use these films this summer to get a greater understanding of our powers so that we can have a fuller demonstration of them. Reverend Dr. David Williamson wrote this. Our suffering, our frustration, our sense of failure, and the world disorder come mostly from our misuse or imbalance in the use of our powers. When used properly, our powers are constructive. And an enlightened understanding and use of these powers leads to salvation. Now, there's a word that has been really misused in religion. We think salvation requires being washed in the blood or something like that. Salvation comes from the Latin root salvus, which means healing or wholeness. That's what salvation is about. It is about healing what needs to be healed and becoming whole. It means the state and being sa saved means the state of healing or wholeness that comes by allowing, not forcing, by allowing the Christ consciousness to call forth and direct our powers. You don't have to be dunked in water, although on a hot day, that's kind of refreshing. <laughs> you don't have to do any of that. The work is inside. Jesus called forth and commissioned his disciples to carry forth his work of salvation, to take that teaching out and share it with others. It was only in years later that ritual and all of that began to be used, which can be useful because it's a physical reminder of what we can do. But what happens all too often is we get the focus on the ritual and lose the meaning behind it. So we are called to restore our wholeness, to remember the truth of who we are. We are called to reawakening to a teaching that supports us in showing our wholeness, our bigness, all of our power, and how to stand in our integrity, the integrity that we are created in to be the true person we came to be. So the first power we're going to study is the first power we build on in every process, and that is the power of faith. Charles Fillmore defined faith as our ability to perceive the reality of God's kingdom of good and divine ideas, despite evidence to the contrary. Any of you ever had an idea and it's like, whoa, what an awesome idea. Where did that come from? I'm the only one. 
Oh, I, I hope some of you have. <laughs> okay, because otherwise I may be crazy or something here. I don't know. <laughs> we all have those ideas. And if we have the faith, we may act on them. And we may tell others about them. And they'll say, oh, you can't do that. Look at what's going on around you. Look at what you have done. Look at the economy. Look at all the turmoil in the world. Those are appearances. They are not evidence of the reality. They are evidence of our false perception. And they are possible to overcome. We use this power to shape and mold substance, which is all around us. It's the universe we live in. We can shape and mold what we're hearing out there in the media and the news, what other people are telling us, and create more of that. We can create more lack if we want. We can create more turmoil. We're, we've proven that as a species, we're pretty good at it. But that's because we've forgotten who we are as a species. And it's time to come back into the remembrance that there's something else that we can mold and shape. And that is what Charles Fillmore called substance. It's the realm of divine ideas being made manifest. Everything starts that way. The chair you're sitting in started that way. The popcorn you're, you're chewing on started that way. It started as a kernel. It started as an idea in God mind. And then somebody somewhere along the way somehow discovered that if it gets hot, it explodes. And maybe they ran away in terror the first time it happened. But thank God people like the Buffett family said, wait a minute, that could be really good. <laughs> and if you haven't had any, their popcorn is really good. And so they tried it. And then, of course, we learned how to season it and do all the things we do to it. But it started as an idea, an idea in God mind that then got into an idea in human mind and then evolved from there. You see, faith is a spiritual power, but it is not confined to religion. We use our faith power whenever we give attention to something. Ooh, that can be scary. Think about what you give attention to. We use the power of faith whenever we give our attention to something. That's the creative process. We say that what we can conceive, we can believe, and what we believe, we can achieve. And it all starts with faith. Charles says we use that faith power by giving our attention to that which we want to have manifest in our lives. Remember, where we give our attention, energy flows. Charles said where, we, where our attention goes, energy flows. And where energy flows, something grows. That's the good news and the bad news. That is what was meant in, the, in Matthew where Jesus said, according to your faith be it done unto you. Think about all the healings that Jesus facilitated. What did he say? Your faith made you whole. You know, this is something that kind of rankles some people, especially if they grew up in a more fundamental teaching. When we say Jesus never actually performed any miracles of healing. He facilitated them. He brought out what was already within the person. What, the wholeness, the health, the vitality that was already in there. And he would say things like, do you want to be made whole? Because if you don't, then nothing I can do. <laughs> and then he said, your faith has made you whole. How often do we say ourselves, oh, if only I had a little bit more faith. The truth is, you got all the faith that is possible. You are so filled with faith, there's no room for any more in there. The question is, not how much faith you have, but where is it focused? Where is it focused? We all have faith, but what do we have faith in? Well, here's a key. If you're not sure, look at where you spend your energy throughout the day. Our homes, our degrees, our jobs, our money, our friends, our cars, our retirement accounts. What do you notice about where you're putting your faith? Well, our natural tendency is to put our faith where we can see it and touch it. We tend to have faith in what we think are observable and predictable results. 
And if those results don't look like what we think they should, then we question our faith, which leads us to then question our God and ourselves. But remember this. Faith is our ability to re perceive the reality of God's kingdom of good and divine ideas despite evidence to the contrary. So faith's most perfect expression is found within our spiritual nature. It is that deep inner knowing that the good that we desire already exists. In our prosperity statement up there, we say, what do we say? Um, we, are, we give thanks for all of the needs and desires of unity spiritual center are bountifully met. Now, yes, sometimes we look at the paper and we go, oh, that doesn't look like it was very bountiful. But we know that God is our source, that we are the channels for good to come through. And that all of our needs will be met. Because we know that supply in every form is unlimited. We have a deep inner knowing when we're in this consciousness that the good we desire is already ours. <laughs> I like what Eric Butterworth wrote. He said, faith is believing when common sense tells you not to. Faith is believing when common sense tells you not to. He went on to write, the power to do all things is already within you. It's not that God will give you any extra power by believing in him. How often do we try to do this? We try to make a deal with God. Oh, if you will just give me a little bit more faith, I'll pray longer. <laughs> faith in God doesn't give you a little more of something. It doesn't give you a little more power. It doesn't give you a little more healing, a little more guidance. Because God is the activity within you of faith. That's what gives you power. That's what gives you healing. That's what gives you whatever you need in the realm of prosperity in any form. It's not something we have to beg for. It's not something we have to make a deal with some entity up there. It's in us. All we have to do is become willing. To become willing to have faith, to be, allow that faith to flow through us. Think about this. All that you have is a result of what you have thought. Everything in your life, from your material possessions, to your spiritual family, to your, your family and friends, to the clothes you wear, the car you drive, is a result of what you have had faith in, what you have put your thoughts in. The Buddha said that. Another great figure uh, from Indian history is Ramanuja, who said, what we seek as our highest goal depends on what we believe ourselves to be. Again, this is the good news and the bad news. Because what this means is that usually we get exactly what we believe in and what we have faith in. David Owen uh, Ritz, the author of Keys to the Kingdom, wrote, if you want to know what you believe, look at your life. Look at your life. If you want to know what you have faith in, look at your life. This is why the work that we do here of waking up to what is real is so very important. It's important for us. It's important for the world as a whole. Because the universe responds to what we believe about it. And the more of us that can get this idea, get this understanding, the more energy there is to shift the world as a whole. What do we really believe about ourselves? What do we really believe our, about our community, about our world? Not just what we say we believe, but what do we really believe? In the Upanishads, it addresses this this area of belief and faith with an analogy of a ball. A ball that is being batted back and forth. And it states that we human beings are like that ball. We have this sense of separation. And so we're being batted back and forth by two seemingly opposing forces. One, the upward drive to evolve. To become awakened beings that we are. To become one with all life. And the other downward bat that thrusts us into our past conditionings, into our ideas of separateness, of being self-oriented physical creatures, at the mercy of outer forces. And this analogy again asks us, what do we have faith in? What do we have faith in? Charles Fillmore defined faith as the perceiving, 
power of, their, of our minds. It's our ability to draw our good forth from the invisible realm. So again, now with that understanding, let's look at the creative process. What are we perceiving? What are we perceiving? Are we perceiving the appearances of things out there? Or are we perceiving the power and the reality that is in what used to be called the kingdom of heaven? We could call it God mind. We could call it the unmanifest realm that's waiting to become expressed through us. What are we paying attention to? Where is our attention and our energy flowing? Peter is the disciple of faith. Not because he was faithful though, but because he wasn't. Because he wasn't. At least not at first. But Peter had something in him that desired desperately to understand what this power was. And he grew in his ability to perceive and achieve. That line in the Bible where Jesus says, you are the rock upon which I will build my church can be taken a number of different ways. Either Peter's head was full of rocks. and <laughs> No, Jesus, nor was Jesus talking about a hill in Rome. Jesus was talking about the power of faith is what we build everything on. It all starts there. When Peter recognized the truth of who Jesus was, he opened up to the possibility that he too could do all these things that Jesus had done and even more. In fact, Jesus said to him in the original gospels before they got misinterpreted, when Peter said, you are the only living son of God, Jesus turned around and said, you, Peter, are as well. You too are the child of God. It could be said that, G that Peter had an aha moment, a glimpse of a higher realization of truth. And we've all had them. We all have had those moments of seeing behind the veil, of seeing the truth of who we are, the truth of our own existence. And oftentimes they're subtle and undiscerned and unheeded. But occasionally the calls are quite dramatic. Sudden, powerful, life-changing experiences that literally pick us up and point us towards our destiny. We can call them our wake-up moments. In her book, Divine Audacity, Linda Martella Whitsett wrote, Compare, um, compares the power of faith to conviction. She says, conviction is trust, assurance, and confidence. She observes that we don't need to perpetually recite affirmations or keep a desire afloat like juggling balls in the air to stay above ground. The fruit of faith, the fruit of trust is a peaceful mind. It is going deeper. It is having conviction. Webster's Dictionary defines conviction as a firmly held belief or opinion of something certain. Of something certain. So when we say we have faith, do we really have that sense of conviction? I think Albert Schweitzer was referring to this many years ago when he said, no ray of sunshine is ever lost, but the green which it awakens into existence needs time to sprout. And it is not always granted for the sower to see the harvest. All the work that is being done in anything is done in faith. And oftentimes you don't see the result for a while. It takes time to grow and evolve. We sometimes, though, get impatient, don't we? Because things aren't happening fast enough, so we give up. Or we say, oh, that can't be done. It was never meant to be. But we never know what our unfoldment is going to look like if we rely on the evidence of what is seen rather than the evidence of what is not seen. Another way of saying it would be absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. Absence of evidence is not evidence of of absence. And just because we don't have evidence that our present situation is working for the good doesn't mean that there is an absence of good. Which brings us to our movie. I have to do this. <laughs> our movie is as oh, go ahead. <laughs>
So for those of you who may not have seen the movie or have, may have forgotten it, this is almost at the very end. Indiana Jones and his father, who is played by Sean Connery, have gone through this quest to find the Holy Grail. His dad has devoted his life to researching the lore to find it. And that book that he referred to was the notebook, their Bible, if you will, of how to get to the Grail. And leading up to this scene right here, the bad guys had shot his father to force Indiana Jones to get the grail because if his father drank from the grail, he would be healed. And he had already gone through two trials, one with swinging blades, and I forget what the second one was. Oh, the steps. If you stepped in the wrong step, you would fall into oblivion, yes. And then he comes to this chasm, and there seems to be no way across. And by the way, in my opinion, that was Harrison Ford's finest performance ever. Can you feel the fear, the terror, and the faith to take that step? To see if he could move, go across that chasm. He had faith throughout the whole movie. He had faith in his academic training. He had faith in his whip. He had faith in his hat. <laughs> he had faith in his father, although he had to heal some things for that to happen. And he had faith in his past. But literally, when he's within arm's reach of the prize, he is faced with an uncrossable chasm. Something that the evidence shows him cannot be crossed. And yet, he did. He took that step of faith, stepping out into the nothingness. And then he put the book away because it had carried him as far as it could. And he had reached that moment when he had to trust, when he had to have faith. Right before he had started down that path, that last scene, his father asked, said to him, he was saying, he, they were talking about all the stuff in the book, and his father says to him, it's time, Indy, to ask yourself what you believe what you believe. Now, there's an important part here that I think a lot of people missed. It appears the evidence is there is no bridge across the chasm, but the bridge had been there the whole time. It just wasn't visible. That's important. That leap of faith was onto something that was there the entire time. How many times in our life are we faced with, with those times when we are ready to step out into that next journey, that next level of spiritual realization, that next place in our life, that next job, that next relationship, whatever. And because we don't see the step, we don't take it. But I promise you, not only from the movie, but from my own experience, the bridge is there. The bridge is always there there. And so, like Indiana Jones, you take that deep breath. And though you may have an absolute fear, you step out. You do what has to be done by stepping into the nothingness. That's such a powerful metaphor in this movie for stepping out in faith. And a great example of absence of evidence is not evidence of absence because the bridge was always there. Kind of reminds me of something the author Willa Cather wrote. Miracles rest not so much upon healing power coming suddenly near us from afar, but upon perceptions being made finer so that for the moment our eyes can see and our ears can hear what has always been there. The bridge has always been there. But until we have the courage to take the step, it remains invisible. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King said, faith is taking the first step even when you cannot see the whole staircase. Marianne Williamson wrote, to trust in the force that moves the universe is faith. Now here's something important. Faith is not visionary. I mean, I'm sorry. Faith is not blind. It is visionary. That's an important thing. If, you, if you're taking notes, write that down. Faith is not blind, it is visionary. Faith is believing that the universe is on our side, because it is. 
and that the universe knows what it is doing. It's a psychological awareness of an unyielding force of good, constantly at work in all dimensions. Indiana Jones had to have faith that the universe knew what it was doing, that the legends were true. But there's a point where faith gets interesting. Parker Palmer observed, faith is a venture into the unknown, into the realms of mystery, away from the safe, the comfortable, and the secure. When we remain in the security of familiar things, we have no need of faith. The very idea of faith suggests movement away from our earthly securities and into the distance, into the distant, the unsettling, and the strange. For those who may have been brought up with a narrower definition of faith, having faith meant you believed in a specific doctrine or a specific code of conduct, conduct or a specific way of believing and seeing the world. But we just threw all that out the window. Having faith means believing in the unseeable and yet knowing that everything that we need is right there all the time. There's a great paradox in faith. So many times our comfort zone keeps us from having faith because faith is moving out of your comfort zone. If you are comfortable, it's time to step out. It's time to do something you never thought you could do. There are no leaps of faith in comfort zones. There are only leaps of faith when we are stepping out of our comfort zones. The Christian mystic, Reverend Richard Sweeney, wrote a piece called How God Invites Us, Invites Us to Grow, Six Stages of Faith Development. And it was based on a, a study that was done. And he talks a lot about influences, about how we grew up by our peers. But what is really interesting and what I want to highlight is that he observed that the experience more than any other that often signals a change in faith or a shift is the experience of conflict and confusion. That's kind of good news considering what's going on in the world today. <laughs> it means we're changing. It means we're growing. We're getting out of our comfort zone as a society, as a culture. And it's what, exactly what we saw in the movie. Indy's faith was never tested like it was when his father was shot. And he had to literally put feet on his faith. Jesus said, do you think that I have come to establish peace on earth? The contrary is true. I have come to establish conflict and division. Because those are often what leads to a fuller faith. They tell us that it's time to leave the status quo behind. And we sometimes experience then conflict and division and confusion. So where does all this lead us? I'm running out of time, so I'm going to skip a little bit here but it's nothing that will change anything. Another important thing to remember is none of us are there yet. We wouldn't be in this room today if we were there. We get stuck in our comfort zones. I get stuck in my comfort zones. But I know that when I step out is when I grow. So I'm not done. None of us are done. My concept, your concept, everyone's concept of the divine, of God, of whatever we call it, is ongoing and unfolding. And again, there lies in a paradox. Because there are many times through the journey where we may feel we're losing our faith. I love it when people come to me and say, Gordon, I think I'm losing my faith. And I say, thank God. Thank God. Because that means you're losing your old understanding of faith. You're losing your attachment to your comfort zone. And you're ready to rise to the next level. It's a blessing and it can be scary. But when we are called to step out in faith as individuals and as a community, and when we do it, the way opens and becomes obvious. We discover that our faith is not blind, it is visionary. And to step off of whatever cliff is presenting itself to us is the biggest act of faith we can take. Faith is a venture into the unknown, into the realms of mystery, away from the safe 
and the comfortable and the secure. And in, when we do that, the mystery becomes my story. Namaste. When the road gets rough And you can no longer see Just let my love throw a spark And have a little faith in me When the tears you cry so much. I see some kids back there. You were walking in the light of God. 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 You were walking, 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 walking.
today? Yes. Woo! Awesome. <laughs> okay. I imagine that I'm going to probably go to them first. Is that okay? I imagine that the Wow Yous want to share because they went on a big trip. I'm just going to remind everyone where we were. Um, so this week for about five days, me and about four of our YOUers, that's the high school age group, um, four of the YOUers, we flew to Oklahoma and we went to something called Rally. Rally is where the different YOU chapters in our region, we're the South Central region, they got together for five days. So it's a bunch of teenagers celebrating each other and their connection to God, and it's just beautiful. It's exceptionally beautiful. And um, so we're missing two of the four that went. So next week they should all four be here, and we're going to have them all talk a little bit more about it next week. And we'll show. We'll have some pictures on the slideshow to show you, and we'll show you our rally shirts. But Saya wanted to say a little bit. Where are you, Saya? Saya, do you want to say a little bit? A little bit. Uh, so I went with Alex, who's right here. Um, hi, Alex. <laughs> and then I also went with Rose and John, who neither of which are here, um, but we can't wait to see them again next week. Uh, it was a really good experience, and the, the theme was embracing and like just like changing and like ac accepting changes and phases and. Um, they, it was separated into different parts, so there was watering, and then like the your soil, and growing, and blooming, and all of the work and uh, emotions that you feel during each of these processes. Um, it was really great. We got to meet a lot of different wonderful people, and it was nice to see them. I can't wait to go to Rally again, and it was a really good experience um, to learn more about unity in a very unique way for five days, so that was cool. Yeah, so we'll have more next week about it too. And I wanna recognize Barbara for taking her time to do that, and it's such, she goes above and beyond. Thank you, Barbara. <laughs> and also wanted to do a quick shout out to these three over here that helped with the little kids while you guys were gone. Thank you. Okay, and I think Genevieve has something she wants to share. So today, uh, we were finishing painting a flower that no one ever finished painting, and we finished it. And we made this today. You could just, like, you could move it in, and then you could do this with it. It's pretty fun to play with. Oh. Uh, Oh yeah, we read a book. Um, what's it called? It's called When God Made You, and um, it's about like before you were born, He knew your voice and He knew what you looked like and how you're gonna look when you're older. Thank you. All right, does anyone else want to share? If not, please join me in blessing these beautiful people. You are a perfect child of God, and God knows just the way you are. Thank you. Now it's time to stand, say our prayer for protection, and sing our peace song. Surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is swoovy.